token machines next. Now I'm going to go into not the basics of the circuit uh, as such, that's covered in another video. However, the starting side of it that picks the starting signal, you will see in the diagrams next. One thing to explain, the token machine, again, same as the staff key, the system is designed to only release one key from one end at any one time. Once you have that key out, it locks the other end up. So this is a no signal a key token machine. There's no signal at the other end. We can effectively release our own by sending pulse down to the other end, proving there's nothing being taken out. Uh, no one else taking the one out at the other end at the same time and coming that back with that pulse releases our own system. So there'll be a momentary kind of push and then it'll come back. So you'll hear the bell ring. We'll take our key out. So turn, get it to the lock, take our key out. Now that has effectively released our starting signal again. And as you can see, we have a release again on our starting signal. So if I clear my starting signal again, I break the release. So one line clear, one pull of the starting signal. To get another one, I've got to go back and put the token key back into the system again. One thing I would like to show you, and this is quite important for signalers, as s and you can see inside the machine, signalers can't. That circuit that releases your starting signal on a token machine is very slightly different than on a, a normal staff key circuit. On a normal staff key circuit, there's just the lever band contact, the NA or NB, and your key switch. On a token machine, we have this little contact here inside called a special roller contact. You can probably just see there's a Bakelite portion looking at me now, and just tucked behind it, you'll see in a second or two, there is actually a brass portion. Now, when I go to take the key out, you'll see the brass portion will make and that brass portion is what picks the starting signal memory relay, that key token stick relay. That's what energizes it. And it will stay there forever and a day until I put the key back into the system. On putting the key back in the system, it will cancel it. So, I, as I mentioned before, I could have 20, 30 minutes of other work going on. Once I've taken that key out, it remembers I've taken that key out. I'll show you now. So I'll get a release. Watch as I turn it. It's just made the brass portion. Okay, and I have the key out in my hand. Now I could go on and do other things. As I go and put that key back in, it rocks it back to the Bakelite portion and breaks our release on our starting signal. So now I'll attempt to display to you how the token actually releases the starting signal. And this is a little bit more complex. Remember I mentioned the key token stick relay, our starting signal release relay when we're using the token, has several uh, resistances in series. So if we start here at our positive feed, we're going to take the top path now. This is our token path. First thing we'll notice is the contact of the starting signal. So we, again, we must have placed our starting signal back to danger, same as we did in our key staff path. First thing we'll release reach is the lock relay inside the machine, proving that we can actually release a uh, key out of the lock. You'll notice the locks also in series with this. So we have our first series um, wound resistance in there. If we then follow it across, we have our second uh, resistance in series, which is our key token stick relay itself. And then you'll appreciate we also have that special roller contact that we've just seen. So we've got a couple of things in there. So with a key released and our starting signal back at, back at danger, we can pick our lock, we can take our key out. As soon as we do that, we'll break our key. The special roller contact is made, which remembers then that we have a key out. And again, if we go down here, we notice then that with our key token stick relay up, this is our key token stick relay, it's memorizing again through this path. As long as we haven't pulled our starting signal off, that will stay up. However, when we clear our starting signal, not only do we break this path and also our original path, again, we've lost all paths that can clear this signal again. But at the same time, as we take our key out, this has stayed, stayed energized, but as soon as we go and put our key back in to cancel it, it again breaks any possible feed path to get to that key token stick relay. Now, again, I mentioned we have a degraded method of operation here. So we have a key path for our key staff, and we also have a token path for our token circuits. 
you can appreciate now with two resistances in here there's there's a lot of current being used up and not much to get to, traditionally to the two ohm key token stick relay so we can provide a full 12 volt feed to that however once we've picked and energized that key token stick relay this part of the path is taken out of use so all we have is this path down here and if you look without that resistance in there we would have no other resistance in here whatsoever we would have a full 12 volt buzz bar feeding straight on to a low current relay and it would it would overload the relay it would burn it out so hence why i said there's a 2 ohm pick 250 ohm stick path if you imagine the old banner signals used to have a similar setup they'd have a low resistance coil to get the banner signal off and then it'd have a, a hold off coil that would be able to take the resistance and hold it off and this is very similar to this so we have our pick path with our two series resistances but once we've energized that relay that path is broken we then have no other resistances to get to this so we have to provide resistance in here so in our case we've used a wire wound resistance and that's what this is about and again all these are our brake paths for our degraded operation. And I'll show you that now.